Radio, it is the Lego Podcast with myself, Tom Wickstead. It's me, Andy Grant, and this week's guest is one of, I think, the most selfless people I've ever come across. It's Mark <laughs> McVeigh. You all right, mate? All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Really appreciate this. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. We well, must just say, just, get into it. just before we start, mate, we must say, um, obviously, this podcast is sponsored by Feel Supreme. Um, massive fan of the podcast they are uh, incredible company we've got their stuff behind Mark at the moment CBD oil 500 milligrams mushroom blends all the CBD you could ever want feel supreme of the people you need to speak to the link basically go through the link in our description there's a link below this video this wherever you listen to this <clears throat> go through that link and obviously if you go through that link you help support the podcast um, so and, and it's great products as well they've been supporting us for a long time really really good products as well Um and while we're on the topic of support, we are on Patreon. This podcast is obviously free, but if you do want to help us and you do want to support it, it's just a pound a week. Yeah. That's it. Link again is in the bio. Right. Bingo. Now, guest time. Yeah. Mark, I mean, that may genuinely make you one of the most <clears throat> given, selfless, uh, unbelievable people, mate. I'm, I'm lucky enough to come across and call a friend and I'm so happy that you're here today and to share your story. Yeah. So, so thank you where to start right I personally would like to start with obviously I know you through going the match and through the football club so just your where did your affinity with Liverpool football club come from is it just like most kids in Liverpool yeah, you... yeah. just always gone um, from around really from around about the age of about six um, at the European Cup final when I was six 81 no way. Yeah. Six years old, yeah. yeah. Jesus. Went to Rome. <laughs> uh, Who did you go there with? Uncle. I went there, I went to Rome. Uh, we left from the holiday in there on a, on a coach in 84. Yeah, it was 84, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. When all we, the way. When we beat Rome, yeah. All the all way to Rome. Yeah. That's how you did it then. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah. And beat them on penalties. So, yeah, I, I've done me stint like. What a baptism that is yeah. into, into football the first yeah. couple of years going. Yeah. And I'd, I'd genuinely go home and away, um, but loved it. Loved it like every other kid here, and, and that was obviously took down to Owen as well. Yeah. That's some age to get going the match, that isn't it? Especially. Six years old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Albert. Is Albert six years old? Yeah, I took I, Albert the game, yeah. I've seen the lads that you had on a couple of weeks back, and they were talking about Hillsborough, and they were so young there. And yeah. I was there myself, and I was only 14 as well. And I was just thinking, it was just dead normal to go then. It was just, you just got on a coach, and you mm. just went, and... You kind of got looked after by the fellas that went. Yeah. You know, you, you were just... And we and I, I was talking to someone. We used to get, go from school. And the school bus was just full of lads going again. We all went. Because it was just... That's what you did. And then there was another bus going to see Everton. Yeah. And then we'd come back on a Monday and talk about it. But yeah, less and less of that now, obviously. Um, I know that too well. Because there'd be one or two kids that would go the game. Mm. Um, it's changed dramatically, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That, and people come from, obviously, outside of the city... The more successful we got as well but it used to be really close-knit and mm. everyone went so was you at hillsborough as well then was you yeah wow yeah so what was that like that was an emotional podcast we done with the lads it, last was, week it, was, that. Yeah. it was yeah and, and you, i was 14 you know i'm always quite careful about what I, what, what i say about that i didn't think it affected me as much as it did and i really started to think about it a lot more when i lost home because it became real. That sounds really crackers, but there were some kids there that died as well, you know. Mm. Um, I was in the Leppings Lane end, I was there, you know. Me, it was with my best mate, he was 16, we were 16 and 14. And I remember getting home two or three o'clock in the morning, and my mum, my mum gave me one hell of a right hook. Um, and she said, I'd never ever go again. And I went to Forest the next game when we uh, played Man United, uh, at Man United. Because I, I was frightened not to go in case you just wouldn't go ever, ever go again. But thinking about it later in life, it, I, I think it had some effect on me. Mate, the amount of messages we had off through the Lego podcast account, I had quite a number on my personal accounts of people saying that <clears throat> years later. Yeah. Listening to those two lads talk about Hillsborough has given them the, the courage to speak to their friends about it and sometimes to seek help. Yeah. So... Mm. That seems to have been what you've said, the recurring theme of people didn't think it affected them. Yeah. And then maybe years later, something's happened and they've thought, actually, you know what? That doesn't quite sit that right with me. Yeah. 
just made me think more about you know about loss and family and and, and especially with them we're working with Liverpool and meeting some of the Hillsborough families and being around them I'm thinking sometimes you can just think of them as a whole and it's individual families that have lost their children and stuff like that and I started thinking of it in a different way mm. um, and it started affecting me more that way like and, and then all the stuff that was around that and the, the, the fight they've had to fight mm. for it as well um, you're totally right in the sense of when when there seems to be an event that happens and a number of people die yeah. it becomes there's a, I think there is a famous saying isn't there it's like one person dies it's a tragedy if a thousand people die it's a it's a headline or something <clears throat> and you forget don't you that it's, it's real individual people. yeah personal yeah. stories yeah. so yeah. Yeah, God, it must have been, especially at 14 years old. And given that time as well, I feel that <clears throat> there wasn't, obviously, the, 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 the ability to talk about sort of your feelings wasn't no. as, you know, as, as sort of open air as it is now. And I think you was, back then, you had to be a big tough man, even at 14. Yeah. You know, you, you know, get on with it. And yeah. That, that, that was how it was. I mean, there is a lot more on, on mental health now and how people are and, you know, speak out, speak openly. And rightly so. Mm. And I think things like, you know, listening to the lads talk about their story and their experience of Hills, but it's on a platform like social media where people can access it. Whereas I guess years ago, yeah. well, unless someone Pretty actually spoke to you about it, you didn't know yeah. that anyone was... And it was like one of the lads said there, he said, you know, you went into school on the Monday. I remember walking into school on the Monday and people waiting at the gate to see if I was coming in. Mm. Because you didn't know. No one knew. It's just crazy. What know. a different world that is, yeah. yeah. It's it was just so, it was so different. Mm. And then obviously going after that, then just going the game, and that, and that was just life for you. Yeah, it was, it was life. It was a big part of our life. And then uh, on came along. You know, I met my missus when we were in school, and we've been together since we were kids. We were in the same junior school, same senior That's school. That's sometimes that doesn't happen now. <laughs> no, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Doesn't. My mum and dad are the same. Yeah, just and and, and you know, we, we were from the same estate, Stockton yeah. Village, Cancel Farm. Um, and we yeah, we went we had the same sixth form, and that's where we met and. Um, you know, the story started, you know, we, we, we got married, ran away to Vegas, two of us on our own got married. Did you? Yeah, yeah. No way. Right, hang on, let's talk a bit about that. the story it's just, itself, I mean, yeah. Vegas is my <laughs> spiritual home. I've been four times, I absolutely love it. Yeah. yeah, well, just at the time, again, mate, life, you know, wanted to save up to buy a house, didn't have the money to do it. Both work, and she'd started working at older age, Joanne, really young. I was working with a family business and we wanted to get married. We wanted to have an house and couldn't have both. So we opted for the house and run away and have an holiday and got married. And we never regretted it, you know, because it enabled us to move on. And, yeah. uh, and, and it gave us a better bedding for when Owen came along as well, because he came along not long afterwards then. And then we were sort of securing our home and we were on the ladder. And again, that was unusual then, you know. Mm. So, you know, we were just an average working family. That just wanted to go away and all these we were married and it was just us two and the little fella what age did you get married then in vegas 2001 so what's that i was born in 75 i was 26 yeah yeah, no, yeah 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 where about yeah. in vegas did you get married little chapel of the west bottom of the runway at vegas m at the bottom of vegas yeah, m boy yeah, yeah, really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you move it round? you pick it up move it whenever it's that big i remember leaving say say i remember leaving the hotel I'm being so nervous, and there's only two of us there. Yeah. And uh, getting in the lift, and everyone's like, "Oh, you're getting married," and you're like, oh, "I got the suit on." And... <laughs> <laughs> Did you not have like a theme getting dressed up as like Elvis? Not on that. No, we had, didn't even have any witnesses. We had to get people. It was just the two of us. So we. Uh, you we had were... to get people. How did well, you... they they asked people. Oh, they just they, just they, 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 volunteers. They, you have to pay for people to, to, just... to witness it. Yeah, yeah. Literally. What a job that is. It was just us. <laughs> yeah, and they were like. <laughs> <laughs> the woman who married us used to be a folly bear, you know. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. She was like, used to be a stripper. She told us after. Oh my god, <laughs> that's amazing. Proper Vegas, that yeah, isn't it? Proper, proper, like. And you know what? I love. I've been back since, and although I love it, I loved it well better then because it was just chintzy. Yeah. You know, now it's all big pool parties and DJs. Then it was mm. just like smoky old hotels, and you could have a little camp all night. It was great. <laughs> yeah. You didn't really care what you wore, or you know, it it, it was brilliant. And I was never really for going there. It was Joe who wanted to go to Vegas, um, and we were at, we went for a week. I remember, I remember it most and terrible from the football side things. I remember Gerard Houllier had, had an heart attack that year, yeah. and Phil Thompson was the manager. And we were mm. playing in Russia, mm-hmm. so I was up at stupid o'clock watching it in the MGM Grand, you know. So that's how I remember the year yeah. from the game. I think that's most fellas in love. Yeah. That's when I got married, you know. <laughs> so I yeah. think it's a uh, quite popular. So the lads I got blown up with Ian. 
they got back from Afghan and uh, they were the same. They were like, we want to buy a house and all that. So them two went on a honeymoon. But the, sorry, they went to Vegas and then went to Mexico afterwards. And they just told all the family they were going away because Ian had been to Afghan and they're having a break. So anyway, they come back from getting married and, and the honeymoon, had a big party and invited all the friends and family. And they just said it's Ian's welcome back party. <laughs> and then he put a video on. And it was them getting married in Vegas. In Vegas. Didn't tell anyone. In one of the chapels, yeah. 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 That is mad, that, they isn't are, like, it? Brilliant. As they are. And we had a little story there as well. Because we, every night we saw, the night we got married, we went and see Michael Flatley loaded the dance and it was him in um, the New York, New York. It was, everything was like accessible then. Mm. And then we went to a little tiny room in the MGM Grand the night after to watch Tom Jones. Tickets were dead easy to get. It was really like... I don't know, there might have been a hundred people in there maximum. You know them old style like gangster little like tables that they put down. Yeah. yeah and they yeah. move, you know, as you go. Good fellas, yeah. not yeah. one of them. And we were like right at the back. Right, right at the back. Totally unimportant and that. And then um some woman had spoke to us and then she heard the accent and she said, Are oh, you Welsh? And I went, Oh yeah, yeah, we're Welsh, yeah. So we picked the table up and put it in the front. <laughs> and you come out, we're like, oh no, we're gonna get away with this. Oh, God. And it um, We'd, we'd been married so we got married and all that and he gave us tickets for about two the two nights afterwards we went back and seen it again wow. and he, I was, we, we had a, we had a lovely time and obviously we come home and like started our new life together you know that's a boss let's start I'd the podcast love to, I, you always talk about vegas i've never been i'd just love to go to vegas yeah. it's I'm just the time go back i think in the summer you know i tried to book it from a stag and it wasn't that expensive like the flights and the hotels were not expensive no. at all no that's it's cheap just people this, think yeah. yeah yeah what you saying there no mark i think I 100% agree how it's changed but it has got that part of, um, what's it called down the, downtown yeah what's it called though it's yeah um, down there the stratosphere yeah it's uh, called something oh, yeah, isn't you're it you're talking something street um, yeah um, Fremont 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 they call yeah. it Fremont oh, yeah, that gives you a little idea of what it used what to be, it used like, to be yeah. like yeah <laughs> I got a photo with this like 78 80 year old woman <laughs> oh, no, that yeah, said yeah. she had a piece of cardboard cardboard saying finish on my tits or something <laughs> Or finish on my face, like this eighty-year-old wrinkly woman. Just, she charged you a five to get a photo with her. That's oh, brilliant. Yeah. Sounds like you want to go. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but it, oh. but that uh, Fremont Street, it's got that. Yeah, that's the old style. Old style. How it was, yeah. And it really is like the casinos are open twenty-four-seven. Yeah. It's just yeah. and people are down that's at there six a.m. Just yeah. was it just flying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll go. We'll take the podcast. Oh, oh, mate, imagine day. that yeah. legged Bill podcast. Party podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like just a great way though mate to start like married life though you, yeah. you've come back and then you've got yeah. your help money for your house and you, yeah. you know you and you know what she is my best mate mm. we're best mates we still are it's not a cliche you know we you know we do everything together still do um because when we lost Owen, I, you know i'll get into that but a lot a lot, a lot of like counsel on me i was like oh, the marriage sometimes falls apart and they were, they were saying it a lot and i've got to be honest we've never been closer Hmm. Even more so, you know. I'm, I'm, you know, she's a bit crazy like you. She loves all the like running and swimming, and she's up mountains and stuff like that. And I just support her as much as you can. That's how she deals with what she's dealing with, you know. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, from what I know, me from what I see, and what I've, I've listened to here in private, and you seem like such a strong team. So we are, we are, we really are. I mean, we've got a nice family around us as well, you know. My mum and dad, and my mum and the great. Um, and we, we do we literally do everything together and she goes to match with me you know she always, she always had she always been the match with you then had she or? she had done pre- previously and then obviously when we had Owen he took over hmm. and he started going with me everywhere um, and she never went back she couldn't go back for like two years and then the season we won the league she went back the first game really never missed the game that's it just get her the game yeah, every yeah. <laughs> See, yeah I think you know she, she just she always wanted to go back to some bits and bobs and the more we started working with Liverpool I felt like they wanted us around really as a pair sometimes mm. in regards to the support and that we give some of the families so Joe sort of started coming along <coughs> sort of under duress and then she just got the bug big time back you know in fact going on Sunday and I only got a ticket for myself and she was like you're gonna get me one and I was like well <laughs> I can't it's only 10,000 but she went in the uh, ballot on Monday and she, she got one anyway oh, so she's going as well but different parts of the ground what what age did uh, did you have her in then? Um, 2005 Owen was born 2004 so what's that I'm you, tw- you were 29 then yeah 20, 29 yeah Joe yeah. was 27 that's correct I'm really bad at dating that especially again you know when you was a kid and you're like 
all you know someone could say to you oh, you remember that goal because like, you referenced everything and you go oh yeah he passed it down here he went down yeah. there he's got and it, we, it was at west ham and that i could remember everything i had this photographic memory when owen died i just lost this total part of my brain that didn't work like that anymore and, and i put it down to like that just didn't matter i remembered stuff that didn't matter and now i was working with these kids i couldn't forget certain things so it was my brain was always on make sure you get this right and i go to a game now and you'd say you know last week and i go who scored i'd forget completely and I genuinely would and i do that with a lot of stuff now but i never forget anything we're doing with you just kids. got a different focus now, just yeah. a completely different <clears throat> way of looking at stuff so wait what happened then with owen then so owen comes along and yeah he was when he was born he wasn't well um we didn't know that when he was born um joanne uh had plane sail through it um and then the birth was bad um joe had had a condition um which meant that we didn't know at the time but she couldn't give birth naturally and so it was quite traumatic um but he come along he was in the women's that's terrible again because we played Everton that day and i went <laughs> I think back no, to it, like, no brownie points there. No. No, no, I think you know she was. Joanne was like, just go. I want to sleep, you know, and stuff like that. And Owen was all right. Know, I'll go. Okay, I'll go. So was okay. <laughs> and the next day, he wasn't okay, and it, it went a little bit from there. And he was in hospital, I think, for three weeks, and then it knocked him back a little bit in the early years of his life with regards that, like, um, he was always really small, Owen. They say, they say the centile, you know, uh, whatever it is, and they're always checking kids on a certain age and size and stuff. And he was always small for his age, and his eyesight was poor. Um, and he had grommets in his ears, you know, it was always something with Owen. But this sounds crackers, but he was never sick, and he never complained, and I genuinely never ever seen him cry. He just was one of them kids that just got on with it. Got on with it. Just got on with it. He was really tough, quiet, tough kid. Uh, mentally really used to think about things really in depth because going back to Hillsborough I remember one morning he sat me down and said dad tell me all about that and I'm like mate what do you want to know about that for I want to know what, what, what happened tell me you know he was older then but he wanted to know you know he wanted to mm. understand because obviously they must have been talking about it in school it was relevant or whatever an anniversary I don't know and I, and I would always tell him the truth and tell him how things was and stuff like that. But he was an in-depth little character, you know, and really think and really cared about things, you know. Um, so other than that, really, first year, everything else was plain sailing. There was no issues, almost never sick, never a problem. We just completely and utterly enjoyed life in every way. Mm. You know, we both went to work and we got as much money as we could and we got off on holiday on as many times as we could. And in between all that, we enjoyed the things of just going in the woods and getting a pen knife out and stripping bark off a tree or, you know, <laughs> just, just literally the simplest things. But yeah. We really, really enjoyed them. Yeah. And Owen would jump from swimming to boxing to football to whatever was out and we just let him go with it. And he fell in love with the footy like you did? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think he got hooked when we started going away. Because it's, it's the whole package then, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you know, you go, I think the away games is like a oh, big turning point. Once you experience that, you're either like, right, that's it, now I'm home and away now. It's a proper day out. It's a proper day out. And even just going on the coach and, you know, he, he's thinking he's a big lad now, you know, because there there's not many kids that get to go away as well. And the way we did it is I sat with my best mate all my life and we both had boys. Jack's one year old and no one. So we get a ticket each for the away games. So we'd split them. But at this particular point with Owen, which me and him were going all the time, um, Jack Jack got really interested maybe a year later and really wanted to go, you know, just a little bit later. And he's mad keen now, you know, and goes himself everywhere. But we'd go week about, like, they'd go to Arsenal, we go to Spurs and stuff like that, which was great for the, for the kid of his age. Oh, yeah. So how old was he then? Go in the game? Yeah. Seven. Seven. Seven, yeah. Seven, eight, nine, going up like that, yeah. When he was like one, two, there was nothing, there was no like medical, no, you know, there, everything, everything was fine and nothing. just completely normal. Absolutely nothing. Nothing up until literally two, ten days before he died, he was sick. Like, it was it was the winter, it was early, early December. So just like a flu that you'd always get, that me and him kind of always got. I think loads of families do around that time. Just, you know, a sniffle, a cough, a cold, that type of thing. Um, not complaining about anything. Um, 
I'd gone to work, Joe gone to work, stayed with Nan and Granddad, stayed off school. Nothing untoward at all. Remember about five or six days before we live we live in like you come out of our back gate and we're in the woodland deep. And we still we got this like five K woodland walk and we got halfway round and he just said to me, Tap my legs are hurting. And I mean, you're all right. And we were with other family we were going, come on to him and I was like and he, but he's never complained. So I was like, What do you mean? And he was going, I'm just really tired, can we go back? I said, We can't make but we're literally halfway. He says, we go back that way, just as long as this way, do you want to get on my shoulders? And he was a big lad, like, and he went, nah, nah, I'll walk. And he'd done it, and we got round, but he just wasn't bothered that day, do you know what I mean? And then from that, he just, he just uh, was staying at home like he wasn't well. How and old I, is he, sorry, Mark, at this point? 11. <laughs> 11. <clears throat> and then I um, I stayed off work, which I never, ever did, you know, looking back on it. Um, for say so I stayed off work on the Wednesday and the Thursday, so I had him. I stay, and we stayed at home. I'm just so happy I stayed off them two days because I just laid in bed with him. Not that he was really sick. We just had two days in bed with an iPad and some things I talked about with him that, you know, remember forever because they were the last two days really that I had with him. But we literally just sat there and um, I always remember at the time it was, um, do you remember Keen had a song? Um, oh. Dun, 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 dun. What song was that? <laughs> Somewhere only we know. Somewhere, oh, yeah, yeah, it's good tune. Somewhere only we know. Great good tune. But, and you'll do an advert every year, don't the, um, the Christmas one? What's the main big Christmas? John Lewis. John Lewis. John Lewis. Yeah. And it was that song. I remember it. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. But it was Gail Dead's softly spoken yeah. song, and it was on. And um, I remember him like, and I went, yeah, the original's better. And he'd gone in the room and googled it, and then he's like. It was on repeat, repeat, repeat. It is better, and it's as well better than it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was Christmas. You get what I mean? It was yeah. that Christmas feeling and that. And I remember he wasn't eating, and uh, I said, "Do you want meat?" And he was do us some tuna pasta because he used to like that. And then I remember him eating it all, and I remember thinking to myself, "I've gone to the toilet. He's, he's, get, he's on the mend. He's on the mend. He's sound now. Do you know what I mean?" Joanne come home and I said to her, "He's been eating. He's all sound because he hasn't been." And then Friday night, rushed to Waldray Hospital. With uh, headaches, we just knew we went right from that moment. But it's only it's only just been like that little that something that you'd keep your kid off school for. Literally, just nothing else, mate. Not nothing else. And and and, and the, the weird thing, and what a lot of people don't know, is that Joe works in all day, and Joe works in the department where all the samples of blood and all that are took, and she works with the consultants that actually work on a home. Um. So when I say there was nothing, I mean there was nothing. She would know what to look out for and stuff like that, you know. I'm a little bit different. I've had my head in my clouds for years with stuff like that. I didn't, Joe, I wouldn't, I didn't want Joanne to come home and even tell me about anything that went on there. Just don't want to talk about it. Our life's perfect. It was selfish of me, but I just didn't want to go into that world. I think it's selfish, mate. We, we yeah. need to be speaking about it before. I think unless you've got kids and stuff, you don't mm -hmm. really know of suffering of kids and especially yeah. all the hey do you and stuff. It's not something that no, you... No, you don't. And I, 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 Joanne shielded me for years from it. She's seen it on a daily basis or, and results of things and how things could go so badly so quickly. But um, yeah, he was tucked in, in A&E. And then um, I remember getting up on a ward and Joe had gone out the toilet and as she'd gone out the toilet, I was still in, in with Owen. And obviously the consultants had seen it. At this point, there's no mention of cancer or leukemia or anything like that. And then she's gone into, when he's gone to Joanne, Joanne, and she's realised who it is talking to her. It was Dr. Mark Caswell, who was uh, looking after her, who's the consultant there on the oncology. And they were in a room and he was talking to Joanne and I still didn't even know, I was at Owen's bedside. And then I come out and I'd never met Mr. Caswell or anything like that. So I'm like, just into a small room like this. And it was like, he's got leukemia. At that point, you, you literally, you, your whole world does fall apart. But trust me, it gets much, much, much worse than that. Um, and I always remember the first thing I said to him was like, can you fix him? And he said, yeah. I said, is there any danger? He went, no. I was like, okay, let's go. Let's do it, whatever needs to be done. Let's tackle it head on. I remember going back in the ward, looking out the window. And like I said, it was, it was, it was December and it was uh, the light, Christmas lights and all that were on. I was looking out, it was going dark, and I was thinking to myself, okay, I'm gonna have to really stand up for these here. I'm gonna have to be his dad, and I'm gonna have to be tough, and I'm gonna have to make sure that we get through this, because straight away they were talking, it's a three-year process. And I was like, okay, 
okay, we're going to do this, we're going we're gonna to fight it. That night, do you know what I'm saying to me, right, I'm going to leave work, and I was saying, okay, I'll come in another night. We, we were planning everything out. We stayed in a little room in the hospital. We didn't go home, we didn't want to leave them. Um, Even before that, I mate, mean, when they're telling you that, I mean, when you see on the adverts, the cancer adverts and stuff, and they say it's cancer, and they're sitting in a room, and it's like, you think to yourself, <laughs> how, I mean, how, how do you even, especially with your wife working, in and amongst that. Yeah. I mean, what is that, like, that bombshell? I mean, is the tears straight away? Is it shock? Is it anger? Is it can't be true? I mean, what? I can't even imagine, mate, how mm. it must feel someone I just telling you that. to protect them. It was just, it was just that protection things. Like, I just, well, I, I need to learn about everything I need to do here now because I've got to make sure that he's going to be okay. And that the hardest part of, of it all was that I couldn't help him. And as a dad, you know, that's your whole being mm -hmm. to protect your children do your hopes do your dreams your aspirations everything all rolled into one and um at that point it was just it's gonna be tough but i was like okay fine gear enough for the fight yeah yeah trying to put all all things in in place at the time i remember i was on this big diet and i, I was in slimming world and i went and seen the girl and i was flying i'd lost about five or six stones so my head was in the right place and I went and seen her and I said, look, more than ever now, I've got to be spot on. I've got to make sure that I'm there for my family. I've got to be make sure I'm fit. I've got to make sure that I can do everything. And the next day, he was gone. The next day? Yeah. I spoke to her on the Sunday. He went on the Friday night and on the Monday, he passed away. Yeah. Fuck. It was that quick. And that, that's the part that I really can't talk about because some things are just... Something's just better left in your mind, you know? Because, mm. um, again, that's the thing that I, I deal with now with families and all that and loss, and it, it's it, it's emotional. I think a lot of people go back and think of their children, because I didn't know that. Oh, what would I do? What would I do? But at that time, you're just, you're just in a tailspin. Mm. You don't, you don't, you don't know what, what's going on in your mind, you know what I mean? And again, you're trying to be dead strong and... You know, I had to go into a room and tell all my family that he was gone. That's just not whatever you ever want to do. You know, it's not... So quickly as well. Yeah, so quickly. And that was the thing with... I mean, I remember being in the, on the ward. Um, at this point, like, Owen, Owen has had three bouts of chemotherapy. That fast. Just and in it, that weekend? Just in that weekend, and it was working. They told us it was working. And I was like, okay. Everything was great, and uh, I remember him sitting up and having a conversation with me, and then he'd be, you know, he'd knock him out and stuff like that. Um, and there was just two kids on the ward, one, one little boy facing him, uh, Charlie, and one little boy off to the off off to the off to the left, and with their family in the corner, and it was just a big open ward. I remember it just being so big, you know, and we were stuck away in the window and that, and the fear of like the. The two boys didn't look well, you know. I, I, I'd never been around cancer before. I never had imagined it, that's how it looked like. You know what I mean? And it, mm. it I mean, scared me. <clears throat> scared me. I remember being in the room and the other dad making me a cup of tea and was like saying, look, you know, I was trying to put me at ease. I always remember him like doing that. James, he was a, lo a lovely guy, you know. And um, there was a story with, with them two boys afterwards, like, the, Neither of them are here anymore. Um, one of the, one of the little lads um, at the end of the bed, Charlie was with his mum. And um, when I started the foundation, we we I'll, I'll jump back, but I need to tell you about this little lad. And we um, Owen wasn't really responsive. He was just sleeping all the time. Then, so whether I, he knew or not, I don't really know. Um, I don't think he knew how sick he was. I don't think so. Um, and I never really, I never got a chance to tell him, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, and then well, we started the foundation, and we were up at uh, Anfield, and I, I, I was pushed into all sorts of things that I wanted to do myself at the time. But I was doing an interview with Sky, um, and waiting round, and then the girls and the foundation were all we had the t-shirts and stuff like that. And that little boy got out of his hospital bed on a machine came down in a taxi with his mum and bought a t-shirt 
and it just crippled me. I just I was I had to go for a walk around Anfield and I was like, wow, you know, he's so unwell and unfortunately, you know, he passed away. Um and I got to know the family uh, quite well because it was so soon we started the foundation really. Mm. It um, just sounds like such a such a whirlwind. Mm-hmm. I remember when obviously we were spoken and we've just got this horrible thing in common where yeah. you were a similar age to my mum when my mum passed away yeah. and I was a similar age to Owen yeah. and both of leukemia and my mum battled away I think it was for three or four months but the things you're saying like I, I remember my dad having to come in and tell me hmm. and I, I, I think like, what, what you're going through but not only that I think my dad had four months to kind of must have been getting his head around it yeah I think of a weekend, you, you think of sometimes how, fa- how fast a weekend can go, you know, you finish work on a Friday, you're back yeah. to work Monday, it, it, was, it, it was, doesn't seem real. No, so. it doesn't, and it, it, even even afterwards, we, you know, we used, we, we go to like, fortunately for us, or unfortunately, whatever way you want to look at it, Joe knew the system, what happened, you know, and she, she insisted that we go counselling straight away, and she knew the guy we needed to speak to, because she worked with them. And I was like, okay, and I gotta admit, like internally I was kicking and screaming, I did not want to go to that. Um and the guy I went to saved me life. Simple as that. Simple as that. He, and um I never knew till maybe five, six times selfishly that he'd lost his daughter. I didn't begin to begin to think of that. Because you're just stuck in your own bubble, you know. And I, I don't know, I had even more respect for him then. Um because I knew he'd really understood mm. what I was going through. Um, that, that's what I mean. you do feel in a bubble don't you? you you think again I my only experience of something like that is when my mum passed and I remember thinking like no one else knows what I'm going through no one else is going through anything yeah. like this is just all yeah. you know <clears throat> and you forget that it unfortunately goes on like yeah. in, in other people's lives you just don't you're just so yeah you just get you, you're just in your bubble and it's it's like when people say you know like um not pain, but when you're thinking about things, you know, when you say, like, you're worried about your job or that, and sometimes I think, oh, get on with it. I do now, mm. but, I, that, but prior to that, I used to worry about that. <laughs> you know, it's about your own personal, what's going on in your life, and you can't make someone feel like this. I don't want anyone to ever feel what I feel, you know, felt and feel. I don't I don't want anyone to ever do that. And then you sort of, like, I don't know, even then, Owen was our only child. And I'm not making it any light easier or hard, it's just that I didn't come across anybody else who was like that. So even when we were doing things, they were in with other kids. <clears> and I'm not saying that was easier or harder for us, it was just different. Mm. And we, we, we started going to Oxford, um, to a place with compassionate friends. And it was because it was a retreat with people who'd only lost their only children. And again, yeah. I just Jeez. didn't want to go to that. You don't even think that's a thing, no. do you? No, like you, you don't, mate. That it's different that someone, if someone's lost a kid, but they've got another kid, that you, you for someone who's not expect, you don't even think that's... No. no, there's so many different permutations, isn't it? I've learned that now, but I didn't, you wouldn't have known. No. You know, we, we, we went up to Oxfordshire to a place, lovely, like, it was basically a retreat, and it was like where monks and that went, and I'm like, I do not want to go to this. You know, I, I am kicking and screaming inside, but I'm wanting to do right by my wife, you know. <clears throat> she found peace and things like that. Joe's really into yoga and meditation and everything. And so I wanted to support her, but at the time I was like, is this what I want to do? I don't know, but it was, and she was right, you know. Mm. I remember being so nervous meeting people. And I remember it was like, I'd only ever gone to counselling one-on-one but with my wife, and but never in a room with people. And I didn't really want to talk about it. And I always remember a guy sitting there, and um, the saddest thing I ever saw in my life. He was sitting there, and he was an older guy, and he had a beard under his arm. And I was like, and then he started talking, and he was he was he was in his late fifties, and he'd been carrying that beard on for years. This child had died many, 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 many years ago, and I was like, wow, you know, it was like these people are in severe pain, and sometimes. I was, I, I come away from there the first time thinking, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay because I've just seen what okay doesn't look like. You know, so we come away and I felt like it was good for us and we were out of Liverpool because it is a bit like a village here. Oh, what you know, and, and yeah. once we started doing the work with the foundation as well, 
you know, you, you have a whole plethora and how people deal with it. You know, we'd go to shops and I'd see friends I'd grown up with run down the aisle away from you because they didn't want to speak to you. And that's hard to take. And then you'd have people who say too much and you're like, please stop your mouth now, you know. So again, it was where you was. So to get away from Liverpool at the time, we, we found ourselves, we're from West Derby, we were shopping in Toxteth because no one knew us. Because I just didn't want to deal with that any, you know, all the time, the same questions all the time. And then and then the people who were running away from you too. It's such a hard one, isn't it? Of what, yeah, no what to say, to do. I've done it. I've done it, you know. Uh, um, Neighbours along the way, you, um, I hope they don't mind me saying, but, you know, it, you know, slow down for Bobby, Bobby Colloran, that's, that's his nan. So I, his, his mum's Joanne, like my Joanne as well, and I would, I would drive past. I wouldn't look at it because I was, I was frightened and I, t I told her in years when it happened I said you know I'm so sorry because I, I would do what people were doing to me. Mm. Mate you may, when you talked just a few minutes ago about <clears throat> people now saying about you know you were worried about losing your job and now it just goes over your head I th you know one thing someone told me about I can't remember who it was but it's made a good point is that when you're unhealthy you only want Sorry, when you're un when you're healthy, you want a thousand things. When you're unhealthy, you only want one thing. Yeah. And it's so true that, isn't it? That we worry about so much nonsense. Yeah. <clears throat> and then when we're unhealthy, the only one thing we ever want is just to be healthy yeah. again. And I, mate, I can't imagine what it must have been like leaving that hospital and going back home. And I, just, I it, remember we walked out the hospital, and I had his bags that I come in with, and I walked into the car park, and Charlie's mum was walking in. And we'd only met her the night or two before. And she just looked at me and I just had the bags in my hand and it was nothing to say. She knew what's going on without him. <sighs> fucking hell, mate. And, um, yeah, I can't even fucking imagine, mate, what that must, um The saddest part of it all, and is that I've seen it so many times since, you know, and, um, I'm not being, not being, not being aware of it, look, life is not easy sometimes, you know, I live here, I've got the badge and that, but you know what, mate, it can also be fun, special as hell, and I did have 11 massively special years with them, and I, my biggest frustration with people now is not living it with the kids, Do you know what, you get, you get one go, and then, and then they're adults, I don't regret a thing with Owen, I genuinely do not regret one thing with them, yeah. we did everything together as a family, Um and I think, I think that was why, well, I know that's why there's a couple of things. One, being on that ward changed me forever. I know you've had a little go with that with me. Um, and it's not easy, is it, mate, you know? No. Um, well, that, that's, mate, why I think once the once you to come on, mate, because not only have you been through something which, you know, you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy, but you've you've not only kind of stayed in and around it, but you've you've stayed in it around it to help other people. Yeah. And I, I think that in itself, mate, is you know, no one would ever question it if you said, you know what, I'm I don't want anything to do with a yeah. fucking kids hospital. I never want to see a, a, a sick kid again. I never want to yeah. go <clears throat> no one would ever blame you, but the <clears throat> fact that you've you've been through this horrendous time, this horrendous tragedy, and you've went, you know what, we're gonna do something in his name and we're gonna yeah. let, make things easier if we can. For families that are going through that I, I just think that me like i said at the start it's the most selfless given thing you can do to dedicate your time not to that and i, I yeah but if you don't know when you don't know why i'd done it he's just a special kid you know he just he was charitable in himself <laughs> i was I've talked about this to this day i'm still getting still sponsored fucking polar bears and polar leopards still coming through the door and sponsored and I can't give them up all over Africa and everything that's brilliant <laughs> like, mate him skin skin whole safari yeah the you know he was an intrepid explorer in the uh, safari park and he would he would adopt all them animals and he would adopt them on National Geographic and we're still getting them letters and and like I say, I even remember when little Bobby died and he wanted to go out, he was going out cleaning cars to make money to put in the kitty for support, supporting out the family. And with the other kids on the street, you know, wasn't on his own. And that's something I always remember and think, you know, that wasn't me. I, I wasn't there doing that. <clears throat> that was his nature. Um, I'm not saying I was cold or hard-hearted or anything like that, but I was very different. He just cared about people. So what I seen in the hospital 
in a very short period with what happened to Owen his life was too short to just forget him that I wanted to make sure and we wanted to do it in the image of us as a family so we that's when we said we want to create life memories for these kids going through cancer and the families and because again in that short space of time it's like we've already decided you're going to lose your job and that and yeah you, you'll get by but you won't be able to do anything it's all about survival and that's what happens in there it's literally like it, no one's asking you for a handout in there no one's asking you for any help they're just thinking about keeping the kids safe and well <clears throat> and going with it and you know when the family lives on the world and having to come back and forth back and forth and at the moment where there's just one family member allowed in and the money it costs and the funds it costs and looking after their you own kids and then you know feeding them in there and it's it's a big cost to then go oh he's well for a couple of days let's take him somewhere where do you get the money from mm-hmm. so i was always owen never suffered with cancer he suffered there's no doubt in that but he didn't suffer long term with cancer and so i never understood what these families had gone through but i've learned a lot in the last five years um and held a lot of families hands through some stuff and that so I, i've seen it you know and they open up and stuff like that but while still going through what we're going through you know that's what i'm going sorry i was just going to say mate th- th- i can't when you throw in you know cancer leukemia and then you've got the added pressures of life of you know a lot I, I presume i don't know if you went to work i presume you didn't you know you've got the financial pressures which at the best of times people are under financial yeah. pressure to then have to think about, you know, that as well just must be just. Person, personally, for us, for me and Joe, yeah, Joe, yeah, Joe had worked, was still working at Alder A, you know, I, I'm talking about the early times then, I was working for family business. I was walking into work through the woods, I was in West Derby and I was walking to Fazakli, and I'm not the type of build to be walking, trust me, but I just wanted to be on my own all the time that I was going there. And I didn't know whether I hated work that much or I was that sad that I went there I just I couldn't be in normal life anymore hmm. you know I, I'd get someone walk through we, we did fitted bedrooms and I'd get someone walk through the door and I was front of house in the showroom and saying oh the handles fell off lad and I go oh yeah yeah when was it 16 years ago and she's kicking off and I'm thinking oh, no, I, I can't I can't have this life anymore I can't that's the way I used to think I just kidding all the day hospital dying and you asked about it and that wasn't a problem it was just the way my new life was yeah mate. and i was like i can't do this anymore but then i was scared we very very close yeah i was told we were going to lose our house and you know, it's not nice when your wife sits you down and says just do what you've got to do as long as we're together nothing else matters and it didn't it just didn't and so i said well you know what i'm gonna at least give one year in my life to make sure that everybody knows who Owen McRae is and make sure that we help a lot of kids along the way. And that's what we did. I left work on my birthday, which was the 30th of January. Owen's birthday was the 31st of January, the day after. And on that day, the Lord Mayor of Liverpool rang us just out the blue and said, we want the Owen McRae Foundation to be our charity of the year. And everything changed. Everything changed. What was, was there always was your wife Joe? was she just when this idea of a foundation and what no one's aimed to live on was there any reservations I, to, be, to be honest with you and i always feel quite guilty about this because i don't think i ever sat down and talked to her about it i was just this we're she, gonna she, do it yeah i think she just <clears throat> she got dragged along kicking and screaming really yeah. I, I imagine as courageous as it is obviously everyone deals with it different and i can imagine yeah. it'd be hard if one one parent yeah not doesn't want to forget but doesn't want to be reminded no, of it I, every day and I, I know there was part you've got to remember Joanne's got going back into work there that's where he, you know talk about bravery I'm telling you my missus is like the bravest person I know in my life I'm in a position where I want to go and do this in Owen's name I'm worried that we're going to lose the house she's going back to work she's got no choice that's where he lost his life she's going back right there you know what I mean and how, how, how the, is she truth of, the truth of the matter is <clears throat> You know we had no choice we had a mortgage um and we you know it nothing changes when your child dies like that you, you still got the same bills and stuff like that it's lot it's a very very lonely place but at the same point like i said to you before you're not thinking like you used to think you're thinking oh you know what that will deal with it and stuff like it was scary but mm. it wasn't as scary as waking up and not seeing him anymore mm. 
I, I, I seen it with my dad, and I remember um, again. I was I was young, but when me when me when my dad lost me uh, his wife, my mum. It's like financial pressures. Just uh, like years later, he said that they were skint and stuff, yeah. and you know, they went on strike. The fire brigade did, and he was not working. He was a single parent, and he, t- he tells me years later that like we nearly lost the house and stuff. Yeah. But at the time, he, it sounds like your attitude. It's like yeah. Listen, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know. I just I just want to do this. Life was just like didn't matter. Let's just do it. And then lots of things happened like around that period that were just like. It was one hundred percent own. I don't like. I'm not like into God. I'm not even now. I don't. I, I've got no feelings either here, there, or anywhere. But what I know wholeheartedly, he was holding me hand through the beginning and just guiding me into places because things were happening that weren't normal. You know, I say this about the foundation now. You know, it's like we we help a whole, an awful lot of kids. We do an awful lot of work, and I. Since I've been doing it, I've been to too many kids' funerals. And I've seen a lot of people try to do some of the like things that we do in those other brilliant organisations. But almost just a kid that died from cancer, like all them kids, what made it different? What made it, you know, work? What made it like why why were organisations in the city willing to throw the weight behind it and help? And there was already things in place for certain things. You know, but we just wanted to create them life memories for the kids, and it's gone on from there really. Because in the beginning, you really have a clue what we were doing. Right? So it's like that's what I did. Like now, now run a charity. How do you do that? Yeah. How do you even become a charity? How do you become a registered charity? Yeah. And you, I, you know what? Ask me now, and I'm like, I don't really know how we actually got there. But I remember it just being such a long process and all the due diligence and everything with that you know and how, how long was it then after he after he passed you know the funeral and everything where yeah, you where you just kind of think the funeral was two days before christmas it was the 23rd of december and um christmas is not a great time for us now and never will be we can't always run away that that's the time me and Joanne sort of switch off down tools as such and just go and have our own time um and then we were a that, so that was did he, yeah so that was christmas he passed away early december and then we were a registered charity by the july oh well so quite quick we helped the first kid in by the february so you're talking eight weeks wow um and that was a story all in it but, and i was gonna say when you say help what i mean what were you you know, you she eight, she, twelve weeks after grieving your own yeah. son, and you're, you're trying to help. How does that even? What were you helping with? What were you doing? There's a little girl. She had leukemia. Um, her name was Lucy. Lucy O. She's now nineteen and started university in Nottingham this year. Oh. So you know, we got another family quite well. It was all very personal in the beginning. You know, it was all very like, and again, weirdly. Two, I want to say two or three months, maybe maybe four months before Owen died, we're waving him off from school. School's right next to Melwood. I'm waving him off on a coach. He's going to PGL, and a man and woman sit next to us waving their son off. And that was Lucy's mum and dad. And Owen shared the room with that boy, a brother. Owen knew about Lucy being ill, but me and Joanne didn't know. And we found all this out later on. That's mad, isn't it? When he died, yeah, he knew because he shared the room with him. But we didn't know. Boys, boys talking while they're away, you know. Yeah. Um, and oddly, even more oddly, when Lucy was one, I fitted the bedroom. <laughs> I didn't know. So it was like really like personal. Mm. So. And uh, did they approach you, or I did you? Re- I can't even remember how or why. I can't genuinely remember how or why. Um, Is it just a case of, look, we've just been through this, if you ever want to talk to us, here we are. I mean, what's that first? I just have really lovely people around me, like Marie and Margie and still here, Jay and Sean, and we all got really close-knit, and um, I think I was searching to help. And I was like, well... Because initially, like, the money off Owen's funeral, it was the only way people like do, like, a collection and that, and I said, well, I want to give money to Chicks, which was a charity organisation on the ward that Alder Ace still is, and my friend is the big boss there, which is Eddie, and he's retiring soon, and he's, be, he's been, like, just as important as anybody in what we do. And 
again never come into contact with them because Owen would have sort of joined that club if you want to call it that but didn't because it was so soon but I wanted to give them the funds and uh, the Alder Centre which is where the Evening Council on is within Alder Day. so we, we wrote two cheques and I went to meet Eddie for the first time and uh, I remember him saying we're good you know lad if you want to help out the Alder Centre they really need the help I'm like, God imagine saying that what a guy mm. you know and um, we've got to become really good friends we meet most Wednesdays at the hospital you know and um, he, his son had leukaemia many many years ago and he's got his own children and that now so it's like an organisation where they've all gone through it so it's really like close knit Is it a thing where you know when you, you and Joe went to counselling is it was it something that got mentioned where the councillor maybe said look I think what most people do is they tend to kind of give back and they, no. they stay amongst them. I mean, no, what, what no. was the advice that the councillor gave for you? And it was, was more, there... it was more for us. Yeah, it was more, it was, it was more, more personal to us. But I mean, I found myself talking about the foundation all the time because that was my drive to get out of bed. That's what I said. But I feel bad on Joe because I don't think I ever consulted there and just done it. You know, um, it's just insisting, isn't it, way people who've maybe went through something because they know what it feels like. Yeah. They tend to I think you put your guard down as well, and like you know, I want to, you know, you know, he knows how I feel. Mm. We're in different positions and all that, but he, he knows that pain, mm. and that that pain's different from many other things. Yeah, but but he knows. But I can, with regard, to Lucy, I, can, I genuinely can't remember how we very first got in contact. But social media started playing a big part in things. Everything was visible. Mm. You know, when I think I was like searching for stuff, and then um, I remember. Because Lucy's Lucy's treatment was like it was at least three years and all that, and we didn't come in certainly at the start. It was more towards the latter end, and I think she missed a big chunk of treatment. If memory serves me right, so it went over into like maybe three and a half years. Um, and I remember some of the things we done with her because what we do is we, we we do not just one thing, you know. So it it's it's very it's very bespoke, I suppose. So. I found out that she loved uh, dogs and I thought, well, the best place you can go for dogs is Crufts. So we took her to Crufts, uh, put them up in a hotel. Uh, they went VIP at Crufts and uh, she had a big day out there. And I remember the feedback from that was like, oh, that, it was a brilliant day and that. And then there was lots of things in between. But the one thing I remember mostly about it was when she, she ended up being one of our biggest fundraisers. Wow. And towards the end when she was getting better um, I remember Ian actually saying to me I want to do a fundraiser but what did Owen like and I was like whoa I remember going home and sobbing never did it in front of them but I was like oh my god that kid's just turned that mm. upside down on, on my head and, and a family and I said well, you know what you like great British bake off because <laughs> you love cakes <laughs> <laughs> and she said she went let's do great British bake off then let's do it and we did so we we did um we did it in two, we had Paul Askew as our ambassador mm. up at the art school. Spoke to Paul and working with Liverpool uh, Colony Art Schools here in the city. We done a, a, a mock-up of, um, of the same as the programme and Lucy was the judge. Well, sir. And so we done that. But the day after, we'd got crocked at Country Park, the whole estate, and we done a... Um, a big day with regards to the Great British Bake Off, I'd, but done it as a fundraiser. A big bake and sale. everybody brought cakes, and then Lucy, uh, like the whole community, was baking. And then she, we were judging that. I was, but it was just a brilliant day, you know what mm. I mean? And um, we raised quite a lot of funds at the time. And um, I remember the same day, me and Joanna had to do an interview. For, for, I don't know how this came about either. It was <clears throat> French TV, but it was to do with Liverpool and the work we've been doing with them. So we were like this country manor and then getting driven to Anfield. That it was all it's all surreal. Mm. Don't want to think back to it now. I was thinking, what were we doing? But we were just wanting to help and we were finding ourselves being positioned into different places because what we wanted to do, you know. Um it sounds but, like you were just finding your feet a little bit yeah, into what yeah. way you were gonna I, I remember that being the fit the first kid, but but obviously we'd done things over the years, so there was others that come yeah. in between because right at the same time as a young lad called Tom. Um, and uh, Tom had had a brain tumour and again really oddly and I mean him, him and his mum is one of our best friends now she does so much stuff for, and all her family um, at the time his mum had met Owen and we didn't know 
when he was a baby and Nan used to take him in when she worked in the shop and she used to mess about with his hair again we told we were told later on and I remember three different people come to us and said because now we were going to be the old McVeigh Foundation and now we were I, I don't think we were registered charity at that point but it was in it was all in you know going on and three different sets of people had come to us about this same boy who was in the same school as I when he was older and I was like well we need to do that because it's close to home and you know um, again in the West Derby area where we were from and um and Marju who we work with um was was leading a lot of the stuff on that and then we found out that he wanted to learn to drive off roading. By that time he, he was blind. And um we had, we couldn't get no one to, to do it. Nobody up in Liverpool, nobody in the northwest and in the end we found a place down in Windsor. So we sent the family up to Windsor, we sent them with their own photographer who who took photos of the whole event for them and they kept privately. Um, they stayed over in the hotel and sisters went, mum a lot of them and all that and they got up and they over four by four and he told me some of the stories about it. <laughs> so I appreciate that he couldn't see it at this point. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're all in the car. <laughs> and it, his mum tells it, you know, look, it is lovely and um, they, she, they, they, they were saying like, so Tom, you know, left it, left it the hay bale. And his mum's like, she's told me like some of the stuff there and the, and the fun that they had and she says you know these are the things that she remember forever and that, yeah. Was, yeah. that was what we were setting out to do um in you... fact she put a lovely post up this week because it, it was the anniversary of it it must have been two days ago and um all the pictures and all that of the day and all that and it reminded me and she wrote something really lovely and i was like wow we really made a difference there and again when we come home I, I don't have many regrets in life, but this is one of my biggest regrets is that I never met him. I got outside the house twice and I just didn't have the ball to go in. I just, I don't know why. I was just so, it was so early after all and I was so nervous. I wanted to help. That's all that I cared about, but I just didn't mm. want to, um, I didn't want to intrude on a family I didn't really know and mm. I didn't want to scare him because of what had gone on mm. with Owen. Um, and I'd sit outside the house because it was quite close to ours, but I, I didn't go. And then um, I got to, he was a huge Evertonian and um, his hair always Duncan Ferguson and through people we reached out to Everton and Crean had helped us up there and um, I got a phone call one day it was Duncan Ferguson rang me and uh, I was like and, I, I, and this sounds like I know them I don't it was like I'd, I'd recently met Graham Sharp because we were doing something at uh, Radio City and he was a lovely guy they had a special day at Owen's school and remember something when Graham turned up and you know when someone gives them their own time and it's got nothing to do with mm. any work or that I always remembered that I mean Mrs loved them and I was like oh, it's Graham Sharp she was like I know but he's a gent and I was like yeah, I agree completely and um Scottish accent I was like you Graham you know fucking Duncan and I was like <laughs> yeah, all right and he went is he in is the wee man in and I was like eh, eh, I'll bring his mum he went round, spent the day with him. Wow. He spent the, he spent the day with them and the two of them and on the couch some brilliant photographs of them. And his mum rung me and said, come round. I said, no, that's a day for them. Mm. And he was outstanding. And they, 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 Tom passed away. And it, it, the night of the wake, the night before, Duncan turned up at the house with the family. Just wow. top guy. And what you hear about him is Yeah, true. I, I hear all the time. It's yeah, great it's stories genuine about Ferguson, as well. Yeah. It's completely genuine. And she still speaks to him to this day. Obviously, she loves him, you know, with them being blues. And he still keeps in contact with the family. Um, are, are you, after Lucy and Tom, are you thinking in your own mind, yeah, this is where I want to, this is what I want to do for the, re I, for the rest of... I just wanted to keep putting making kids happy in own name. That's a good point there, isn't it? Because you think you're either going to go one or two ways, you're either going to think, wow, I, I can't keep seeing these lovely little kids passing away, mm, no. or I'm going to, I want to just dedicate my life to this. It's... I was more concerned about how they felt, because I knew really early on that I couldn't have a presence on the ward. I personally, or Joanne, couldn't have a presence, because if you're a family and you're going into Alder A, and you're going to get told like we did, your child's got leukaemia, and then I'm on the ward going, oh, Mark from the old McVeigh Foundation. Oh, how's Owen? I'm their worst nightmare. Mm, and course, I knew yeah. that. I knew that really early on. My head worked in that way. And I thought, well, I, I don't want to scare people. So we need professional people on the ward to be able to do this for us. 
So that's why we tapped into like chicks, which was Eddie, who was on the ward constantly, about three, like, three days a week. And then there was Teenage Cancer Trust for the older kids, Rob Sefton up there at Alder Eye, was click sergeants. And I'm telling them what I want to do, but I'm, I'm imagining there's been hundreds of fellas like me who's lost their children, and it was happening. The big change for us was Liverpool. That's when everything changed. And that was, came from, well, you know, that, that image and the flag that the lads made, because that became the emblem of the old McVay Foundation. How did that flag come? Because again, everyone's mm, yeah, know, yeah. knows the flag. So, Owen used to sit with me in the middle of the cop, and them lads who I didn't know at the time, and neither did Owen, which was the 1906 buying cop, um, used to wave the flag. He used to quite, I always go, ask him, can I do it? And I go, just, just go and get it. You know, you, you want him to be brave, and you want him to, like, yeah. you know, go on, mate, you can do it type thing. and. And he was like, oh no, that just asking for me, just go, just go down. And he built up the courage to go down. It was a lad called Phil at the time who I know now well. And they gave him a flag and that was it then. He wanted to do it every week, you know, that going, I'm going to go and ask these, I'm going to go and ask them. And I, I was made up, he was doing that. And then we'd go the away games and that group of lads we'd see, but again, a lot, lot younger than me. And I knew they went the game, but I didn't know them. But unbeknown to me, I only used to follow them on Twitter. When he died, I had his phone and I was going through it, and one of the last things he was looking at was this group 1906. And one of the particular them was a lad called Adam Gaines, who ended up becoming a really good, good friend and worked a lot with me at the foundation in the early first year. And I went down, we played him again, I'm thinking, what? Oh, no. I don't, he hadn't even had his funeral. And we played Man United, and I went. And I don't even know why I went. Again, I, I now think to myself, what was you doing? But I don't, I don't know where I was then. Mm. And, I, and I remember I just went along because I wanted to speak to these and they were all putting the flags out and they're always dead busy and, and I'm trying to get his attention but I didn't really want other people to hear me and it was like and then I remember telling him and he just like stopped in a like uh, you know I, I knew he just didn't know what to say and I said look I wouldn't used to wave the flags there now and I want to make a flag I've got this pot of money from the funeral and I want to want to give it to you because it mean more to him that you make something there but I'd like it to be for him and he was like, okay, okay, here's my number, and that was one of them, give us a call later, and that, and I was like, okay, and they, it didn't even, the game never even whistled, and I was out the door, I was almost in a taxi, and went home, I didn't even see the staff, but I, did, I wasn't interested, I just wanted to do that. And that night, it was just me, my wife, her sister, and her, her fellow, he's Mark as well, the four of us, and we were always all together, we were just sitting in the conservatory, and Adam texted and said, oh, met you, I'm at a meeting now with all the night. They just happened to have a meeting that night. Um, and we're talking about this and all. Like, well, what is it you want? You want like a player on it or something like that? I said, no, no, I don't want anything like that. And Natalie was there and I said, Nat, she's like a florist and she's quite artistic. I said, can you draw this for me? And she drew that. But it had an 11 on the back, which was Owen's age, and I didn't want his name on it. And I sent it back and he said, and I said, look, just tell me how much it'll cost. And, and he went, no, mate, this is 100% us. This, this, we want to do, we wanted to do something like this, but this is the absolute reason we want to do this now. And then they sent it back that very next morning with a 12 on the back, but with McVeigh on it. And then we were like, I was like 12, was he on the mountain? And then I was like, um, Owen was 11. He went, yeah, but what we were thinking was he, it's the 12th man. He represents the 12th man. And I was like, I like that, he said, we'll, we'll put his name on the back, McVay. He said, we thought about Owen, and I think myself, Adam was only a young man, and he was dealing with this, you know, speaking to me that way. Mm. And he was, he, he, he dealt with it so well, you know, and he, he said, you know, if we put Owen, people can think, Michael Owen. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. If we do McVay, they'll know. And they... It's amazing to hear that story, because it's, it's a flag that I see every time on the clock, on the cop. Yeah. And uh, to know how, how that came about is, is yeah. unreal. And those yeah. lads who have done that, oh, like... unbelievable! Yeah, and and they do so much for so many other people. Yeah, you know? I've heard and loads a, of stories now. And a young now. group, not so young anymore, they're having kids and that themselves <laughs> now. But they were, and, and there's other, you know, Sam who looks after the flag for us. He's 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 what he was one of the youngest, and he he looks after that every every game and that for us. Um, that 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 flag then um, was was left to them and then. I remember him like he was, you know, messaging me back, and we, we were getting it sorted, and, and we were playing a house in the cup, and they all, they all go, so they all went over to whatever house is, is it Holland, Germany? I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I, don't know. I think it's Germany. <laughs> yeah, it is actually. Yeah, yeah, it's Germany, and so 
I was like, I remember, like, I must have been bad, you know, is it, so is it going to be done, you know, because I was just intrigued, and don't worry about it if it's not done for that or whatever, and then we were playing Stoke, weren't we, in the semi-final of the League Cup, and he said, we're going to try and do it for that, and it was only two days, and I was like, oh, that's a bit much, ask you for that and all that, and I remember that night, Joanne saying to me, I need to get away, I need to go, and where are we going? She went, anywhere really far, we've never been really cold or really hot i don't care we need to get away and we we booked to go to the the Carib the caribbean the next morning we just got off we'd never been before she just needed to get away and i understood that and we were there a day and the game was on we were in this little tiny shack in a place called bonnet which i'd never heard of at that time it was like dutch antilles near Aruba and it was just a little shack and the two of us and I remember the guy looking at me missus because she was crying and he was he was thought I'd give her a belt or something <laughs> and I'm thinking like if only you knew and I just can't ex but we were watching the match and the flag, the flag went up oh man yeah fucking hell and we were like and my mum had hold of it and um, my day he was the chairman of the foundation you're gonna fucking set me off again that's yeah. fucking hell <laughs> the two of us and you could see have you seen the footage of it and clops clapping and the whole stadium's clapping and i can do you want me to pull it up you I can think, do mate is yeah. it is yeah, all right yeah. just for fucking start fucking ball just know. just for people who are watching i'll uh wait what's that even feel like man oh, oh, i'm so <laughs> proud but jesus man we were far far away it was a it was a special special moment you know um <sighs> And it, 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 the amount of love we got from that, you know, people contacting us, our family, our friends, it was, you know, it was a real proud moment. And them lads did that, you know. They, so we sent that image. They, Andy, Andy, who does all the stuff and that. It, and his mum, his mum's an ambassador at the foundation as well. They're all come really close. And he, he, he sent it to, um, over to get Emma, who makes the banners for all, all the banners, and Emma put it together and made it. But Jesus, I didn't know it was going to be that big. Yeah. No, that was the bit. Like was... you know, you know, before that it, it come, mate. Was it, was it like known about within the club and like obviously the fans? No, and they did it. They the spy and cop nine They did it. Them young lads did it. And then somebody had tweeted out that it was going to happen. I don't think I even had Twitter at the time or whatever, you know. Um, and like I did, oh, it might go up and that. But, you but know, I mean, do people know the story of Owen and the old McVeigh Foundation I, I and stuff? I think it had and... been getting dripped, fed out. The old McVeigh Foundation was very, very in its infancy. You know what I mean? It was that was more about about Owen. Mm. Um, and yeah, that that went up, and then the the club then seeked us from that. You know, um, I got a call the next day. We were in. I don't know, on a cut us out. We were going to these mad places. Mad islands, in Mad yeah. islands. No one knew us. And some of the things that were going on. You no, know, and that, honest to God, Andy, I, I, like, about two months before Owen died, he, he went to Carl Heenan, you know, where Stephen Gerrard went. Yeah. He went there, and they had Heenan's got talent. And, you know, again, that busy lifestyle, you're in work and all that, and Joanne's going, you need to get there tonight. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll be there, be there, be there. And I've gone across this, Heenan's got talent, I've got, like, paint and everything all over me to track he's you walk in like that typical dad and all that and he gets up on stage and he's got a steel drum in front of him and i'm like a steel drum what and he could play and i was like why do i not know that he can play the steel drum and he played george ezra budapest yeah. in a group all of them together and i was like he was the littlest because we were all like you know second year 30 or 40 whatever year 13 whatever they have and i was sitting there just giggling to myself thinking He's got a smirk on his face because he knows I know he could do this. <laughs> and like, I was like, oh, wait, hey, can you play the drums, you know? <laughs> and um, he comes down and I make mate, that's boss. He came second. And I was like, that's boss, mate. And he was like, yeah. We got off that, that day, that flag went up. We got off in the Dutch Antilles and the Steel Drum Band were playing George Ezra Budapest. Fucking hell. Why would it, a band in the middle of... They'd be playing Bob Marley or something like that. Both of us just stood on the gangway. Even oddly, the, the soundtrack to, to it really and Owen's funeral was um, just things that would jump back at me was, um, oh, it was a song and it was just on all the time and even all my mates now, they get quite upset when it comes on, they all just go and they look at me and I was just driving up here to come and do this and I was a little bit nervous and they come on the radio, it was on City, yeah. Uh, 20 minutes before it mad, isn't it, things like that when that happens, yeah. like. I was like, and I went, all right, mate, I'll be all right today. 
just you know and that's my little prompt to be you know i know you're here and i know um i know i'm going to be sound and i'm a little bit more comfortable but got nervous because i don't really normally talk about this bit i talk all about the foundation but with the background and yeah 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 can i do you, do you mind do you want, do you want me to get it up yeah, now? Go on, is, is, is that all right yeah, yeah fine what, what should I type in here now? Yeah, is it on YouTube? Un- yeah. Unveiling, is it? Then we'll oh, just say. Okay, foundation. Um, if you put that up first. And just say maybe, I don't know, flags. But, um, yeah, um, that's too long. 436, go. Mm. So much stuff, isn't there? Um, yeah. That, yeah, that, that tribute, one, yeah, that first one. That, that one, yeah. This one, yeah. yeah. Fact, yeah. So you're 10 seconds, yes. I'm sorry. Mate, that would have been so fucking emotional, uh, mate. The bit that got me right after they all started singing, you'll never walk alone. It was, that's not when you sing, you'll never walk alone. Mm. Um, they did it on the, you know, the eleventh minute was it of the game, which was his, his age. So is that when they brought it up on the eleventh minute? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then when, when, when was that, Mark? Two thousand. So it says it yeah. was that two thousand yeah. sixteen. Uh, that was obviously yeah. when the video was uploaded. But to January two thousand. Yeah. Well, it was around. Yeah. It's been like the day yeah, it, was then, yeah. it was then. Yeah. It was late yeah. January. Because then we went on to play City in February in the cup final, and again the Wembley allowed only Owens flag in that day. Really? Yeah. And again, them lads sorted that. Incredible. Yeah, these shows incredible. as well, doesn't it? That, that Liverpool family, which obviously go on to more now, but I mean, it's, it's great, isn't it, that those lads, it's not It's not like they're getting paid by the club. It's no. not like, it's just... It was, all, it was all about passion and doing the right thing and wanting to, to support one of their own, and I'll never forget that. Mm. Never forget it. And then as soon as the club got involved, then... You were just yeah. saying, then it just yeah. just went mental. We got a call when we were in the, the next island or whatever, and saying, "Do you want? To, would you like to come onto the pitch and see the flag at the next game, which was Arsberg, the home leg?" And I was like, "I'm here. I'm in the Caribbean, and I'm going to be for two weeks." Like, and you're like, "Oh, okay. When you come back, contact us or whatever." I tell a lie. We, we did it against Arsberg. It was another game in between, and then we come home, and um, yeah. Again, my missus, my missus is unbelievably private in everything. And she'd said, look, I want to do this, but I don't want to be standing on a pitch in front of people, and I don't want these announcements and stuff like that. I want to see it. And so we just sat in our seats in the cop, and the stewards come and got us quietly, took us round, and they went outside the ground, coming down a player's entrance, come out, and we just stood at the dugout and watched it. And no one knew, only us, you know, in the club, done it properly and respected us right from the offset. And then... A uh, lady was looking after us at the time, who's been superb for us, Susan Black, director of communications, just said, um, one of the owners would like to meet you. And I was like, okay, okay, got to get in contact. I said, okay, went back to my seat, sat down and watched the game with Joanne again, got off for half time. We just couldn't deal with it. We were there, we, I felt like I had to do it for Owen. I felt like, we, we, you know, he, he hasn't got the choice, he would love to go. What are you doing sitting at home? And I, but at the same point, like I felt like, what are you doing? Doesn't matter anymore. You know, it's not mm. the same. You're not with him. You know. Mm. But then we started doing stuff with the foundation anyway. Then we went and we went and met him up in uh, Chapel Street. And all I was thinking about all the way up on the lift. You've been up there, haven't you? Up on mm. the 9th, 10th floor or something. This. Oh, please don't be a twat. Please don't be. <laughs> I should make one of those own and stuff here to add. Please, get it don't. Um, and he wasn't. And he got it. And he understood. And he had family story himself with regards to leukemia. And, and from that moment, it was just like. I remember he said to me, like, I don't know if it was the first meeting or the second meeting, he said, How big do you want this to go? And I said, It's not about big, it's about being right. Being for Owen and being anyway, and now I understand that. But he said, I think this is going to go into a place where you need to, like, know that this could really go, you know. And I said, Well, there's no end game to it, you know, it, nothing brings Owen back. You know, I can, we, could, we could build an hospital wing and call it whatever, but the, the priority now needs to be these kids and how we support them and how we help them and give them, give them these life memories. And it started to take off then. We had the backing of the club, and 
they, they, they were so clever in helping us at the time because if you think about it I've just lost them I've got all these ideas but I'm not thinking straight you know and it was all done you know at the right time mm. you know with the right support well like you say I think how many parents must lose a child and then go the day after right that's it I'm going to do this in his name and no, no disrespect yeah. to them but it, nothing will just come <clears throat> of it because it's heat in the moment and, you know, and because that's all they want I've mm. seen it it's it's it, it's soul destroying you know it's quite sad but yeah that in all honesty that was the catalyst because so you've the got something there yeah, yeah the Liverpool fan base is humongous and they just wanted the help mm. and I was saying well, if you want to help we want to help these kids so help us help these Mm. you know it was never for nothing personal it was let help these kids and is that what it's become now then just let's give these sick kids just great memories <laughs> yeah and there's been so many and I mean what an, even just that just that one <laughs> line I like, what a fucking <laughs> we talk all the time about having like a value and you know having a purpose in life and when I've had my down times because I felt I haven't got a purpose what a fucking purpose to have yeah it, it does give like, it it gives you the spring and you step into this sad times for oh, jesus christ mate there's some there's some boss boss things that you can do i mean mate, i'm getting emotional thinking know, I, of I, the I, times I, mate, of life you must be giving these kids and families that yeah you know, and, it's, it's, and it's evolved because like, like we we now have a place up in the lake district the first family went in on monday because we opened up on the 17th we've had that now for two seasons virgil van dyke sponsors that for us and um they get to go on holiday um there's no cost to them at all. If they're struggling financially, we'll fill the cupboards, fill the fridge, whatever it needs. Oh. Um, and what's that, just respite for them, just to yeah, get away? Just initially, initially, we that's how I met Rob Ferns. Mm. It was here, Charlie needed to have a bone marrow transplant. So initially, you used, we, we used to give it to children, we used to rent it to send kids who were having a bone marrow transplant. And the reason I knew about the place is because when I went there, me and Joanne used to go there quite a bit. It's only an hour away. It's on the way, just on the edge of the lake district. It's in Carnfort, South Lake Lynn Leisure Village. But you wasn't that far from home. And then I'd been told that if we were going to do something, you needed to be within an hour and a half radius of all the day. So I was like, okay, I don't want to go the Welsh way. We'll go that way. It's beautiful there. I've got experience of that there. So we'll send families. To that there who, who need it if they're gonna have a bone marrow transplant and then i heard rob speaking quite well about it they're in hospital for a hell of a long time so we can get them to go before and they can spend some quality time with all the family so that's what we did um and the feedback was really good and then one day i said to the committee can we buy one and they're like well yeah but it's a lot of money are you what i said i will raise it and they were like and i said well, it doesn't matter if we raise it this year next year but it's a goal for us to achieve and if we buy one, we send loads of families. So again, you've got to go away and do the work and, you know, speak to Click Sergeant. Would you send families if we get it? Would you, you know, a teenage cancer trust, would you, and, and get a, a dossier together to say, yeah, this will work. They're going to send 10. It never got to that. The foundation grew that fast that we didn't ask them. We filled it ourselves because we are working with that many families and kids because everything happened so quickly. Yeah. Um, it sounds like you... you you, you just filled a void for people. It, it was needed. Mm. It was needed. I don't like being looking at a second one somewhere else because it's needed. These things are needed. Um, Do you ever pinch yourself and you think, how, how, how has it yeah, become this? Something I think lockdown that... was a big, like, I've struggled. I, 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 I got sick at Christmas and then lockdown and stuff like that. And I think for the first time, I really stepped back and gone. I haven't come up for area in years. Mm. You know what I mean? And I've been spending a lot of time on my own because I'm always on the road, you know? Keeping busy. Yeah, yeah. meeting people mm. who are organisations that want to get involved with them. You know, same with Andy, exactly the same thing happened, didn't it? I, like, I don't even remember how we met. It might have been that. I can't see that. Yeah, I don't remember how we met. Um, I've definitely seen you speaking at Charlie's Chance um, Ball. Yeah. And I think... That, might have been that then, I think yeah. that's the first time I'd seen you and then I think I might have thrown you the message to say mm. that the boss yeah yeah, something like that and then um, we've got like mutual friends at the game and that haven't we mm. and then um, we've done some stuff for LFC TV and I think you did and then we we, I think I was coming out the office one day and you were going in and we just started talking yeah, yeah. I think it was something like that and then like I've learned a lot about different types of cancer and I'm not a professional trust me I don't I don't even ask the questions I just I've learned along the way 
and started working with three young girls who all had osteosarcoma, which is bone cancer, all around the same time. Um, one was Helen. She was from Warrington. She went up. She wanted. She wanted to do something to do with Harry Potter. So we sent to Harry Potter World again. It's just not going to Harry Potter World. It's sprinkled, you know, with a bit of, you know, fairy dust and stuff like yeah. that. And so the whole family went up and uh, all together. And then the second one was Lois. So she was a little bit younger because what we tended to do was say to that kid, "You pick the next kid," because they knew who you should be working with. They're on the board with them. They know who needs the help. Mm. So when they would have a certain age, we'd say, "Who should we? Who what? What? Who should we do something with? And what would they like or anything like that?" So then we found Lois. Uh, she was from um, up near Magal, and again we, we got quite close with the family. We done a, they, they invited to a lot of the things that we do because we do a lot of group stuff now and then. You get to know them a little bit more and know the kid a bit more about what they like. And Lois had just had an operation up in Birmingham to do with a leg and osteosarcoma as well. And her dad said she's missed out so much in life. And um, and he got upset one night telling me about, you know, it's really important, this super sweet 16th birthday now. And to me, I never had a daughter and you know, I'm not in that, like, bracket. And I was like, okay. So I said, well, let's do it. He went, yeah, but she's going to be 17. And I'm, well, let's do the 16 for 17. And he went, well, can we do that? I mean, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do it. <laughs> so we had a party for her. She didn't have a clue. In um, what's the building facing the uh, lava buildings with the roof terrace? Oh yeah, I know yeah, what you nice, mean. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's in there. It was in there. The ho- you know the whole building. We had hundred of her families, and we done hundred of her family. We done a white party for her. The whole thing that a sixteen-year-old would want. That must bring you so much joy. That yeah. bring me so much joy. It was so much work. I remember <laughs> it being like, "Wow, organising a sixteen-year-old party," and you know, you know, and, and I'm, I'm wanted it to be special. You know what I mean? And we had to stay in over in the uh, Malmaison again, support from them. We had a makeup artist going in. Someone to do it there. She thought she was going out for a meal with the mates, and then you walk past. All the family were all upstairs. Incredible. Um, and then we had, you know, the fellow with the bongos and the, obviously just the food, the catering, you know. And it was a special night for us, something. And again, something to remember forever. And Lois is doing great at the moment. She's got her own little car now. She's whizzing around. Which then led, and that's why I was getting to it, to the little girl you met. Mm. Because she said to us, you should get in touch with this family. And she did... I'd had a, a leg amputated and it was the first time I'd ever come across that and I really didn't know how to deal with it. And then I was thinking, well, the only other person I know who's really, really positive and done so many wonderful things is him. <laughs> so I thought, well, and I, just, I said, what do you, how do you feel about going in just talking to them? Because in my eyes, it was like, I thought it was just as important to speak to her mum as it was her. Because mm. I needed Andy to say, you know what, I go skiing. No, you know, and I go and I run this and I do that, and and then I'd seen his background with his motivational speaking, and I'm thinking this family needs that, they mm. need some of that, you know. And I remember when you went with me, and um, yeah, I was so nervous, mate, Be- just because I, that's where my respect as well comes from, mate. The fact that you're you're going in there, you're doing this, and it's it's not nice seeing children who are sick it's no. it's not no. do you know what i mean and you're going in seeing these kids who are sick and it's it's heartbreaking and i'm trying to then be in, be this person you've built me up to be this motivational speaker yeah, who runs no. and skis but inside i'm like yeah. oh, fuck i feel so no, sorry I felt, for you i felt for you as well that day because we were both really didn't know how it was going to go yeah and i remember just sitting in and i had never really come up a lot mm. but i remember mum was really engaged yeah I remember she was sitting mom. on the end of bed listening to everything you were saying and i was like Okay, because it's gonna come from the mum. She, she, she. That's where I was when I was saying I'm gonna to have to be this for all, and I'm gonna to have to. Be. She's the same, and I, and I could, you were talking to Scarlett, but I knew the mum was listening to everything he was saying, and I was like, okay. And I think the thing we got was it was about two days later, and I texted you, and she said like she's got to go to Preston for a prosthetic leg, and I know mm. you did that, and uh, they said like she said like would 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 Andy go along with us at one time, <clears> and I was like. Yeah, it's, it, worked, it, it's, yeah. it's worked. It's worked. They've listened. Was that what? Why was it like? Why did she have a? She had like, osteosarcoma. I don't know the, again the full outcome, um, which is bone cancer, but had to have a leg amputated. Jesus. And, and are you looking after all types of kids then who are 
sick. I mean, what's the kind of not cr- criteria, if you cancer, like, then? Cancer. Cancer leukemia. Mm. Yeah. Basically, oncology at all today. Basically, mm. oncology at all today. So, what's happened now more so is there's loads of them little individual stories. And the harshness of it all, it costs a lot of money to do things like that. You know, a party for. On that one, mate, before you go on to the, the big. Tell, that, tell the one that you've done, which I think is fucking amazing about the cinema, you told me. Yeah. That's a bit hard I, because that little boy's not here anymore either. But oh. yeah, no, it's okay. We, we sorry, mate. Don't have to go into it. If... No, we won't go fully into it. But we, the the mum had asked me, rang me up and asked me to get a DVD, and I was thinking, oh, because they weren't from Liverpool, and I'm thinking, oh, the scouser will get them a not DVD. <laughs> 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 no, it was, he, he wasn't well at all, and he was at home. I, the film was it was it Batman? It was like one superhero ones. Mm. If it went Batman, it was. It was just an amazing stuff. What <sighs> you just it just said a lot about you, mate, yeah. and and the lens I, that you're going to. I've to... been working with the family on a few things, a few really special things that I, I can't talk about. And um, the mum had asked me for the <clears> DVD, <throat> and he was really poorly, and you know the outcome wasn't going to be great. And he wanted to watch this film and the family wanted to watch it at home so she said have you got a way you could get that dvd and i was like um <laughs> I'll, I'll go to crazy market and um, I'll, I'll ask around you know and anyway we got a copy of the dvd i'm not embarrassed to say i just wanted to give the little boy whatever he wanted yeah so we got in the car and i was driving up to warrington and um on the way there i'm thinking i can't give this to DVD, it's like got nothing on it. <laughs> I, can't do, I can't do this. I can't do this. So I just like swerved off and was like, got my phone. Where's the nearest Odeon cinema? So I just went in and spoke to them and said, "Listen, this is the situation. I need, I need you to give them a private viewing." And um, luckily enough, the first lad wasn't helpful at all, and I wasn't having it. And I was like, "I mean, I'm quite stubborn." And I was like, "No, go and get your manager." And the manager was like. Why not the old McFay Foundation? That's that flag. And I was like, yeah, yes, it is. Get it. We're, we're in. Yeah, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> get popcorn here. <laughs> yeah, and then um, we put together just just him, his mum and dad, his twin sister and his brother. Just them. Incredible. Oh, amazing. Was that was incredible. And um, yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, it was a couple of days later he passed away. What a feeling you must have, yeah. though, mate, given that mum and dad those. At least they deserve, mate. Hmm. You know, all it takes, isn't it, right, is to put yourself out there sometimes. And I've took loads of knocks on the chin, people saying no, and it does it. What do you mean, as in, like, as asking? In the beginning, people didn't, people didn't want to know. Just didn't want to know. What, when you were trying to, trying to do things? Organise yeah, things yeah, for kids? Yeah, because well, all of a sudden, people know what the old McVeigh Foundation does now. Sometimes, you know, people who support us are ambassadors, they open doors for you, don't they? Mm. But at the time, I was having to kick everything down myself, and I was like, no throwing you're doing it and either way you're doing it mm. and i was stubborn as a mule with it you know and i go around the houses to get it done it's incredible that determination when well, you've it, got that behind you know that yeah but he was with me doing it you know what i mean it's just something that i just i just needed to do and that's why i don't speak so much about not no no not on our own because it's all about him but now it's about the lovely things we've done for them kids because there's stories mm. now there was an idea then mm. now there's actual body of work Mate, you know what? This is a really weird question. And I, I don't want it to come out wrong. Obviously, you would never ever wish for Owen to yeah. to not be here. But do you think you'd have this passion in your life for something and this purpose that you've got if it wasn't for losing them? No. As in, as in work wise, you know, where you no. get up and you get this much happiness. No, I used to love my job. There was a time I really, really loved my job. But no, this is different. This is just completely different. It's like a call, and it feels like listening yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just something that's got to be done. You know, it's just. This week, this week, some of the things I've been doing, and I'm like, there's been this. Do you know anything about golf? I don't have a clue about oh, golf, and I get try it. playing I can't it the go time. too much into it because the kid hasn't got it yet. But I've had golf, certain golf people that we've been speaking to, and mates are going, "Do you know who that is?" And I'm like, "No, I don't know who that is. I haven't got a clue." It's like, and but that fraternity, that golfing fraternity, I've just stepped up to the plate big time for this little boy. I was like, oh god, mm. this is going to be special. Do you know what I mean? And it, it makes me get a little bit goosebumpy. I'm like, okay, well, I'll learn about. I need to know about this. But but again, <clears throat> you see, yeah, I'm putting it together. But there's so many people that are helping me. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, quite a lot of them, and they, they, they just give their time. It's got nothing to do with the job. 
they're so important in this city you yeah. know what I mean sometimes I want to like I go with Tim and Tim and him they'd hate me for it if I said it yeah I know mm. just in private mate you've told me certain like yeah. players and people and yeah. who've done things and you've said like don't say nothing and I, and I haven't yeah. and it's nice, mate. What I like, love about the foundation is that people aren't doing it to be. Hey, guess what? I've just, I've just donated this. Or I've just, it's oh, people just yeah. going. You know what, Mark? It, I'll pull a few strings. Yeah, you go and you crack know, on. you crack on. Yeah, and Make it happen. how special is that? You no, know, it is, it is, and, and 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 that is the beauty of this city. You know that 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 it happens. You know, we we are a charity that support kids in Merseyside. That's what we do. You know, and the the support in the city is brilliant when you want to do things like that. I focus a lot more on group events now this year as well because again the, the funding it's like if we go and do a I don't know like we spoke about that party that might cost 10 grand but I could take 100 kids out on three different trips for that mm. so there's got to be an element of both mm. yeah of course and support from and that's all been the big learning curve um, and Liverpool again supported us with the lodge because we did the game against Milan um, the LFC Foundation gifted those 36 grand to completely renovate the lodge. So wow. we, we completely done that. It's God. great that Liverpool have stepped oh, up they're, the support. They're brilliant. Honest to God, you make me smile because they're just brilliant. Mm. The people in there, Matt, you know, right the way down the girls, Forbes is... Forbes is brilliant. Forbes is like... Oh, he's going to hate me. He is like the the best human being I know. Yeah. But I know one. <laughs> and no one. I can vouch for that, yeah. He sort of swell with me when I've done work with the foundation and stuff. Um, he's he's basically sorted me tickets for the game and stuff when I've done stuff for the foundation. And he's just he's just always doing things for go, people. He's and he's too, man. He's so you know he's a small little Scottish fella, un unassuming kind unassuming, of guy. And he's got so much respect, and the players respect him massively, and everybody at the club respects him massively. But the stuff he does that has got nothing to do with his job. That he. That he just gladly pins. He's just a family man with three little girls, and he just pins together himself. And it, he, he's gonna hate me for even mentioning him. I know he is, but you know what? Sometimes you've just gotta say, "Wow, what a special, what a special person he is." A special guy. Goes so above and beyond all the time. Incredible. Yeah, just a really, really top, top guy. And and and, and you know, we we work with lots of organisations, but I'm talking like through Liverpool now and the things we do. You know, we we've, we've sort of become the like the go-to charity in the city. In regards to like the match, where it'll be, because we're here, all our kids are here. Mm. So a lot of the sponsors and all them boxers, they decide they're not going the day before. Well, they just go to waste, literally. Yeah. And they're like, so the fo our phone will go, Mark, we've got, you know, you know, we've got a, a table of six. You've seen it, and then I, I've got a list like so big that the fam and it's lovely, but it, they've never been. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's like, oh, this is going to be so exciting. But then you put them in a box and you're like, it's not like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not like that over there. But, it, you know, to see, there was one kid from Saltney over in Chester. Oh, God, he's such a lovely kid, Alfie. And um, I said, I'll meet you at the cafe and all that, you know, because, like, I might have, like, four people in this stand, six people in that stand, eight people. And you find out that before, she's got to be a little bit of a, like, get everywhere. And some of them, you like, he knows what he's doing, but this family haven't got a clue of where to park or whatever. And so you basically work a match day creating these lovely, lovely experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he come into the cafe and so met the mum and dad for the first time. He said, "Are you all right?" Yes. Yeah. I'll take you over now. And he just moved his mum and dad. So I said, "You mark." And I went, "Yeah, this kid." And he went, "Just want to say, you just made, you've made my life. I can't oh. believe it." And I'm like, the lips going and I'm like. <laughs> I might just get over the, just put him in the garage. You know? <laughs> I'm explaining to, I was saying to him, oh, this, this, and I, I was, and his mum said, Mark, I can't see. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. So right away, I'm starting to explain things. Oh, that, so over to the far right, mate, is where, and you just, mm. le you're learning along the way. It, was, it wasn't that he couldn't see his eyesight, it was poorly to a certain point, but their kid was just beaming. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can see you I was beaming, like, no, telling I'm, story, I'm looking mate. at his face and I'm thinking, Wow. And I remember coming away just going, that's exactly why we do it. You know what you sum up, mate, that saying of, you know, it's 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 not the given, it, it's, sorry, it's not the receiving, it's the given, is the yeah. best gift in mm, like, yeah. life, isn't it? It's not, you know, presents that you can receive what you want. It's yeah. that gift of given is... Yeah. Incredible. Uh, it's just... Yeah. You've given me so much hope, mate. Well, but a, a, a kid's so happy with the smallest of things, is aren't they? I mean, this morning, I was at all day, 8 o'clock this morning, a, a boot, football boot, signed by Van Dyke. Picture, 
Um, little boy going through a hard time now. Stayed in overnight last night. I haven't met him. Just know of him and agreed to drop something off this morning. His dad texted me before and just said, oh my God, he woke up, he's so excited. And I went, doesn't take a lot, does it? Mm. Just, just, you know. But mate, you saying that though, mate, it, after such a shit year for everyone, mate, you've just, you just give so much hope yeah. that again, you don't need, to, you just need to just, just give a bit. Yeah, you know? just have mm. a go, just, just do something <clears throat> nice. Lockdown, we was, Locked, I'm proud of us at lockdown. Lockdown was fantastic. Some of the work we done in there, and I, and I do genuinely believe we we like led the way in regards to some of the charity stuff. Because I, I I like I've got a committee I'm answerable to, you know, and we all had a had a general chat, and I just said I don't feel like we should be asking anyone for any money at the moment because this is this is not good for people with their livelihoods and stuff like that. And we all agreed that we sort of like wouldn't go anywhere with regard to that and you can get out anyway or speak mm. to people but I said but the important thing is is that we can't just put these families down and then we're like well how are we going to do it because if you're not taking them to concerts and you're not taking them to football matches and you're not taking them to theatre or whatever what are we going to do because that's what we do mm. and I was like okay so I came up with this idea called Syllogia Treats and what we did was um, it was three things one every month when we were in right in the heart of yeah, lockdown, the lockdown yeah lockdown the first thing we did was pizza night and it just sounds like pizza night but it was just brilliant <laughs> right so it was like we work with um luban you know dave Critchley. yeah yeah so um we put together a pizza box a fresh pizza so it just looked like a pizza box and when you opened it it had all of the fresh ingredients in to make eight pizzas for a family so again it was like they don't have a lot of money and it'll feed them all the whole family for a couple of times and what have you um and then there was a hundred families took part, just under a hundred families, and we distributed them out. But we had to do it all at the same. So we had like teams of like drivers going out. So we got them out the morning of the the, the early evening we were doing the cook. So Dave did a live Zoom cook with them all. Sarah was controlling it at her house in regards to that. And um Virgil come up. I just yeah. see the kids. <laughs> oh my god! I was, you know, what? Wait, wait, I'd be fucking excited. <laughs> I was, I, I knew it was happening. Well, but well, the thing was, he was trained. We at the time we were training at Anfield. I don't know why there was must have been a reason or whatever, but he was training at Anfield. Are we going to get this done and all that? And again, um, we started the night. I kind of thought this might happen, but couldn't say because in case it didn't. But they were all having a great night anyway. They were all cooking, and Dave was fantastic. In the, and he, you know, he, he's like a TV chef now anyway, and he, so he loves all that. And um, he was doing fantastic. And then I just got a call, like, um, Virgil, Virgil wants to come on. And I was like, yeah, 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 sounds like, <laughs> link, link him in. And um, he was sitting at the back of the coach. You know, with, uh, but but he was, I, I could see him live, and he was telling the players, shut up. Not like that. I was like, no, just oh. turn it around, get them all on like that. And then he just put his earphones in, and he spoke to them. What a guy. And they all just went completely silent. That's the thing with football, especially in this city, mate. It happened to me when, when Carragher come to see me. I was a 20-year-old fella. Yeah. When when that, when that those football players and the aura that they've got come and see you when you're sick, yeah. and it's the best feeling in the mm, world. Yeah. So for him to do it stuff was, like that... brilliant. And again, you know, that, that's, that tells you everything about that guy, doesn't it? Yeah. Everything about him. What a him. superstar. And he just, like, he went, I think we just won the league. And they were all, like, singing and all that afterwards. And they, they, like when you're on a Zoom, you only see, you the kids just think it's just for them, don't they? I mean, we're looking at a big multi-screen with everyone on, and that was that was blowing my mind. Cause I just kept going like that, but the screen it was full, it was full, and it was full. And I was like, oh. I'm gonna come away, and my, my missus said to me, and she doesn't say, she went to me, that was boss, that you know. <laughs> she went, how did you put that together? I went, that's just sheer luck. I said that that all happened the way it did. She went, but it was just so professionally done. I went again, not me. That's the other people. It's just the idea. You're man, you, you, mate, you like the um, what's his name? The, the one at the front, like it's Conductor. like got, Conductor. Yeah, yeah, it's like you've got the, this, you know, made this passion and this together, purpose. You've got to have the right people around you, and I have got the right people around me. I mean, you can you can sell them a dream and say, look, this is what we can do, and and then we we try our best to put it together. But it really, really worked that night. And then from that we done movie night, and then I think they're all thinking Van Dyke's gonna tear up movie. <laughs> Every <laughs> time we, we, yeah. we did, we, so we, we were like the kids are so diverse in age from two to like 
17 that you're like what movie so we i think we done like three movies and then we done like they were all linked to each other so they could swap them around and post bags and post them out to each other over the space of the next month because they were all stuck mm. in i think i'm one of them ones and again i always try to do something with owen in mind all the time and one of owen's favorite film well his favorite film was school of rock jack black what a I film love jack black yeah but a good film so uh, well, the other good thing is we're taking all the kids to school of rock. We bought a big, massive under tickets to take all the kids that again, and these things mean stuff to me and Joe. So we always try to do that. But it was Jumanji. He was out. Was the film Jumanji too? So <laughs> stitch me made up terrible. I <laughs> got the outfit. <laughs> but I didn't tell him when I said like. Arunga's missus and she went, oh, do it, just do it, Get you'll wear it, but you say it's for the kids. Well, yes, you it. can't say no, can you, really? <laughs> you turned up at our house with all these DVDs, he was delivering them, and there's your, there's your outfit, like. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, I'll have it only if I've got his mask, I'll I've got his mask, and he went out, fair play to his boss, he went out to all the kids and um, played up to the part, and um, he was he was even in, in the woods at the back of ours, you know, for like the shots, like he was in the yeah. zero, put out, um, but again, the kids all they all had the movie night, and again we had the co-op involved. You donated all like the popcorn and uh, Pringles, just like a proper night where they can all sit around and watch a movie uh, together. And we all done it, and then and then what's the last thing. Oh, it was um, afternoon tea. We got another local company involved. And the way I was looking at it was we we wanted to use like businesses that like like we use Laura's little cupcakes. Yeah, we use Laura loads. Yeah, she's yeah. boss Laura. But, but look. I felt well we could help Laura Laura had a bit of a shout out for some help at the beginning we needed to buy cupcakes for the kids she's the best as far as I'm concerned yeah she's amazing um, and then we, we got them all out but, but where it came back was Laura then got to know personally some of the families then and it became real for her and then she's recently done a big fundraiser for us on Twitter um, and raised a lot of money and then I said to her well if, with that money let's pick something that means something again to the city that we can put back in so we booked we've got uh, um sefton park in august and we've got 140 tickets to it's, it's an outdoor theater so they're driving up from penzance and it's a van that they open up and then they perform a live so it's basically a picnic we're going to have all the chairs picnics all the, be the first time we've probably all been together since lockdown mm. um but I said, well, let's let's help the local, you know, Sefton Park and all stuff. And Laura was like, yeah, because she loves all that performance. It's just great the way it's, it's all linked in, isn't it? Yeah. So we're like, I'll yeah, help you, you then you can help. You on each other if you just work together and help each other. Makes life a lot, lot easier. It does. You know, and Dave Critchley, you know, lo local. And, you know, we've got Paul at the, uh, again, at the art school is one of our, and our, even our ambassadors are like hand-picked in that they, they, they mean something to us. Peter MacDowell. Another mm. one of them, if you know Peter well, just a really lovely nice guy. Little, nice guy. Jamie Webster. <laughs> Jamie, that Jay on the pod, yeah. Jamie, yeah, yeah. Jamie, Jamie's a neighbour. But, you know, again, just little things like people do, don't understand and don't take for granted. Jamie's done every single charity night we've ever done. Never asked for a pound, you know, do, never, just turns up does his thing and watch him involve now mm. if he thinks he's getting away with not doing the Chelsea lights now he's big time now big time now isn't he, but yeah. no, he, he's always been there and even going out to me like recently with over lockdown with all the kids he went out and delivered all he's the afternoon boss, with yeah. me yeah. my little girl absolutely adores knows all the words to um, Weekends in Paradise Yeah. and I texted him and said oh Jay can you do us a video and in 10 minutes he was like hi Alba I've heard you like me song Weekend yeah. in Paradise just a boss fella and just brilliant <laughs> just, a just which meant something to us but um, jo Joanne's mum my mother-in-law was his uh, dinner lady in school like, and he still calls her Mrs T and everything's just close to us even it's, now you know we've just kept it like just talking to you mate just gives me such a good uh, such a feel good factor oh, of yeah. Yeah. what you're doing what Joe's doing what the foundation's doing what the city's doing and and what people can do if we actually be nice to each other yeah and you know it's been such a negative year of just you know what and sitting with your mates and listening to the work that you've done in, in owen's name and how strong you've been not only how strong you've been not only to survive it but then to thrive and give back so much yeah, it, I, <laughs> the word inspiration i hate the word inspiration but it's just honestly mate, i can't like i can't even thank you for nearly two hours of your time just what because it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> if there's anything, I feel like I've scratched the surface as well in regards to the validation. It's mad, isn't it? I feel like 
if there's anything that I'm really guilty of, it's being grateful for things and mate, th- this mug you've you've given me and the bag and stuff like that. It's honestly, it's just I really I'll take this home and every single time I'm just like I'll go back home tonight. My daughter will be asleep. She's six months old. I'm gonna go into her room and kiss her and I just Good. like I just yeah I can't talk, mate. Honestly, oh. I've never seen you emotional, lad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I can't thank you enough for your time, honestly. Oh, no, it's it's a pleasure, and it's just given us a platform to that. So I've I've been dead mindful of not doing podcasts and stuff like that. So an awful lot of the work we do is really private, and I mm. feel like I'm the protector of the families in some ways in regards to that. And sometimes I'm I'm thinking, do, do do I mention this? And I don't I don't I want it to be natural and I want it to be real. And because I knew Andy, I wanted to do it. I wanted to I wanted I I know he's seen where I where I live. Mm. You know he's seen what we do and you've seen it at the sharp end mate and i commend you for coming in i remember you know when you left the room and i remember you saying to me how do you do this mm. and i was like god this guy stands up in front of thousands but it's different in it mate it's yeah. like mate, what you do honestly mate you, it's you're a hero for what you do no, mate but, because but again you know you're un- unassuming the amount of times and i'm not going to embarrass you but the amount of times you've done uh, you know some of your talks and you know you privately send funds to the foundation without you and people like you we, we can't do it so thank you you know and giving us the platform to, to be able to do stuff like that and i've got a lot of good people like you around me that do that so thank you mate well listen mate thank you for again coming on and sharing the story and if you can help the foundation in any way you know get in touch we put the links in the bio and yeah. stuff and you know you're on it's instagram twitter yeah, what's the all, of it. all, all, all of the it. usual yeah <laughs> just google search in the search bar yeah, you know the website's all there some of the work that we've been doing lately as well yeah and if you've if you've listened to even 10 minutes of this you'll know it's a worthwhile cause and mm. again I, I, I can't well listen you've said that how, how amazing it is the work you're doing i just echo everything you've done i've seen it first hand so should get involved and i may yeah you've um You've had me laughing, you've had me in tears. and Yeah, we've got to laugh, mate, you know what I mean? It's, we've got to, haven't we? It's the whole point of life, you know? I, I, I'm I, just thankful that I'm given... We, we have got any other children, and there's an awful lot of space and time that you've got, and you, that can be used very negatively for the both of us. And me and Juan use it to the best possible way we can. And, uh, and without my missus, none of it would be possible, really, because she's like, she's like the rock that everything's built on, so... I'm thankful we get given the opportunity to make these memories in Owen's name. So. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you, Thank you very Thanks, much. Mate.